Hey everyone, Julia from Sunday Sounds here. In this video, we're going to take a look at our song-specific patch designed in the style of the song you see on the screen. I'm going to demonstrate this song patch in its original key and at its original tempo. You can change the key you play or hear the song patch in by using Easy Transpose, and you can change the tempo as well. Details on how to adjust both the key and the tempo are included in your download. For this video, I'll be demonstrating the main stage version of this song-specific patch. If you purchase the Ableton Live version, you'll be able to use this video to follow along just the same, seeing as the hand positions, song sections, layer ranges, and sound of the patch are the same. In main stage, you'll use your mod wheel to move through the various song sections. In Ableton, you'll use the macro knob labeled Song Section. Be sure to check out the full demo video for this song patch to see all the parts and sections in order and how we move the song section control throughout the song. This song patch has piano, pads, organ, bass, and synths all triggered in the left hand range, which stretches from here up to here. When the song section control is all the way down, there's piano across all of the keys. There are no triggers in the left hand range, just single notes. This is so that you have the flexibility to play all of the parts in the song. When the song section control is at one third, we start to hear chord triggers down in the left hand range. There are just piano and pads in this upper left hand range and piano chords, bass, synth, and some other sounds in the lower range. There's also a synth lead sound from this note all the way up the rest of the keys. You'll start the song with the song section control all the way down for your intro, down verse, and down chorus. At one third will be the turnaround, medium verse, down bridge, down instrumental, down interlude, and down refrain. At two thirds will be the medium chorus, medium post chorus, medium bridge, and medium refrain. And all the way up will be the big chorus, big bridge, and big refrain. And remember that whether you're in main stage or Ableton Live, these positions are the same. For the intro, you'll have the song section control all the way down. Remember that when the control is all the way down, there is just piano sound across all the notes. No chord triggers at all. You'll play octaves in your left hand and a lead line in your right hand mixed with some chords and other parts. I will break it down for you. So you're going to start with your left hand on the one, five, and one of your key. In your right hand, you're just going to hold a one chord. To start off the song, you want to quickly glissando down from the top note down to the bottom note. Then you'll start playing a lead line in your right hand. That lead line sounds like this. So the first half of the intro sounds like this. For the second half of the intro, you're going to start it the same way as the first half, with a glissando down on the one of your key. Then you're going to play an abbreviated version of the same lead line you played for the first half. It's slightly different, it goes up for these top two notes. Then we're going to play an arpeggiated pattern between the left hand and the right hand will be on the six, minor six of your key. So you'll hold the one, five, and one of that chord in your left hand and the full chord in your right hand. And you'll play an upward arpeggiated pattern like this. Next, you'll move to the next chord, which is the five of your key. So you move your left hand just down one whole step, move your right hand down to that chord, and then move down to the four, So the second half of the second line sounds like this.
You'll notice with my right hand, I did something slightly different. I played this. So here it is again with the left hand. And then on that four chord, I just arpeggiated back down to that note. So here's the second line all together. So here's the full intro. Keep in mind that if you have trouble playing these parts, you can always just play the regular chords. This part does come back later in the song as the turnaround. For the turnaround, you'll have the song section control at one third. You'll play octaves in your left hand, and this time you'll play a lead line that's similar to the intro, but slightly different. This lead line sounds like this. So here it is with both hands. Just be sure to watch for this part in the demo. For the down verse, you'll have the song section control all the way down. You're going to play octaves in your left hand and chords in your right hand. You can also play simple chords in your left hand as well, whatever you're most comfortable with. Remember that when the song section control is all the way down, there are no chord triggers, so you can play whatever you would like. There's just a piano sound. I like to keep my chords lower for this part. So I like to play the one and the five of each chord in my left hand and then play sometimes the one in the third of the chord in the right hand, just depending on the chord. Here's how I like to voice most of these chords. Of course, I like to switch it up throughout the verse and play different inversions for different chords. Feel free to practice this however you'd like. For the medium verse, you'll have the song section control at one third. You'll play octaves in your left hand and chords in your right hand. Keep in mind that this is where the chord triggers start to come in in the left hand range. So you'll want to move your chords up above middle C. So I like to keep my chords up here. For the down chorus, you'll have the song section control all the way down. You'll play octaves in your left hand and chords in your right hand. Here's how I like to play these chords. Keep in mind you can voice these chords however you'd like because there are no chord triggers here. For the medium chorus, you'll have the song section control at two thirds. You'll play octaves in your left hand and those same chords in your right hand. Then for the big chorus later in the song, you'll have the song section control all the way up. You'll again play octaves in your left hand and chords in your right hand.
For the post chorus, you'll have the song section control at two thirds. You're going to start by playing single notes in the high octave of your left hand range, which will trigger some piano notes and chords. Your right hand will be playing a riff that also incorporates a lead line that's similar to lead lines you've played previously in the song. I'll show you what this right hand part sounds like. Now, if you notice, you can really hear in there that lead line that is from previous parts of the song. Here's the right hand part again. Now, if you can't play this at speed, that's fine. You can just play the lead line if you'd like. We add in all these extra notes to help fill space and sound more like the recording but you don't have to do that. If you want to just play the lead line, you can play it in octaves up here and trigger that synth sound up high, or you can just play the single notes down here. And do notice that this lead line does go down to this note rather than this note because the chord is different for this part. But if you wanna challenge yourself and learn this filler riff slash lead line, I'll show it to you one more time with the left hand. So you'll play through this three times total, just like that. And then on the final time, I like to add in the low octave of my left hand just to help build this moving into the next section. But you can feel free to build it in other ways if you'd like, depending on how your band chooses to play this song. the down bridge, you'll have the song section control at one third. You're going to start by playing single notes in the high octave of your left hand range, which is just alternating between the one and the four of your key. Your right hand will be playing a riff slash lead line that's similar to the post chorus. And if you haven't watched the post chorus section of this tutorial, I recommend going back and watching that so you have an idea of what this part will sound like. I'll play just the right hand part for you. Keep in mind it is slightly different than the post chorus lead line, but it's very similar. Here it is. Notice the first half is the exact same as the previous lead line and the second half is slightly different. Here it is with both hands. So for the down bridge, you'll play that a total of two times. Then the second time through the down bridge, I like to add the low octave of my left hand just to help build this section. Then for the medium bridge, you'll move the song section control to two thirds, play everything the same way. Now this time there are new chords in the left hand, which prompts you to play the right hand slightly different. Here's the right hand for this part. Here it is with both hands. Keep 
keep in mind the goal here is to play the lead line and make it very prominent while filling space with those extra notes. So if you're not playing it perfectly, that is just fine. If you miss a couple of notes here and there, that's okay. If you want to just play the lead line and not play those extra notes and riffs, you can do so. Just a reminder, you do have that synth sound that's triggered from this note up. So you can play that lead line in octaves up here and trigger that synth sound, or you can play just the single note lead line in this range right here. So you'll play that two times through for this medium bridge. Then the bridge comes back later in the song. This will be your big bridge with the song section control all the way up. You'll play octaves in your left hand and I like to just play the piano lead line in my right hand because there's a lot going on for this part. You'll play through this bridge three times total. For this section, we're going to talk about both the instrumental and the interlude. They come directly one after another, so some will just call it the instrumental. We'll start with your instrumental with the song section control at one third. You'll play octaves in your left hand and you'll play the piano lead in your right hand. This will just be for one line. Then the next line, you'll hold out the one of your key for two measures, and then the four of your key for two measures. That's the first two lines of the instrumental. Then you'll drop the low octave of your left hand, just play single notes in the high octave of your left hand and no right hand. You'll play the one of your key for two measures, and then the four of your key for two measures, and you'll repeat that three times total. Next, we move into what some would call the interlude. For this part, you'll start playing chords in your right hand. The first line of the interlude is just like the instrumental where you just play the one of your key, hold for two measures, then the four of your key, hold for two measures. So I like to voice those chords like this. Then during the next line, I like to bring in the low octave of my left hand. And for this part, we'll start playing some new chords like this. Then you'll repeat that one more time, played the same way. During this entire section, you can feel free to add any short piano riffs or lead lines as you wish. Or if you want to arpeggiate through your chords, you can do so as well. This part is ambient and improvisational. So depending on how your worship band decides to play this song, this could be a great spot to add little improvisations.
for the refrain, we'll start with the song section control at one third. You'll play octaves in your left hand and chords in your right hand. You'll play this for two times through the chord progression. Then you're going to play a piano riff in your right hand. That riff sounds like this. This part is pretty quick, so I definitely recommend playing this slowly and working it up to speed. You'll also be playing this throughout the rest of the refrain, so I recommend practicing it lots and lots so you build up your finger strength. You'll play through this chord progression with octaves in the left hand and the piano riff in the right hand for six times through the chord progression. Then we're going to move the song section control to two thirds play three more times through the chord progression, everything the same way, then move the song section control all the way up, two more times through the chord progression. Now, this is just how I like to build this part to sound more like the song, so you can feel free to build this in other ways if you'd like. Keep in mind, you'll want to keep your starting point at the one third position, because remember there's no triggers when the song section control is all the way down, so I like to start at one third and just move my way up the control. And just for reference, this is 13 times through the chord progression total for the refrain. For the outro, which comes directly after the last refrain, you'll have the song section control at one third. You'll play octaves in your left hand and the piano lead line in your right hand. And this time it is slightly different. Just the very last note. Instead of ending on the four of your key, you'll end on the three of your key. And this is just so that you will match the melody lead line that's going on above it. Here's the lead line. You'll play this three times through the chord progression and then end on the one of your key. Be sure to watch the full demo video to see all of these parts in order and how we move the song section control throughout the song. Song specific patches work best in the Sunday Keys template for Mainstage and Ableton Live. Sunday Keys gives you all the sounds and tools you need to play live worship keys and all of our song specific patches integrate seamlessly with Sunday Keys. You can learn all about Sunday Keys for Mainstage and Ableton Live on our website. Thanks for checking out this song specific patch. I'm Julia with Sunday Sounds and I'll see you next time.